In two weeks, we will celebrate Easter. The resurrection confirms the divinity of Jesus Christ and the reality of God the Father. Our thoughts turn to the Savior, and we ponder His matchless life and the infinite virtue of His great atoning sacrifice. I hope we also think about His pending return, when He will rule as King of kings and Lord of lords. It is supremely important to prepare the world for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When He comes, oppression and injustice will not only diminish, they will cease. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Poverty and suffering will not only decline, they will vanish. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Even the pain and sorrow of death will be done away. In that day an infant shall not die until he is old, and his life shall be as the age of a tree. And when he dies, he shall not sleep, that is to say, in the earth, but shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and shall be caught up, and his rest shall be glorious. So yes, let us do all we can to relieve suffering and sorrow now, and let us devote ourselves more diligently to the preparations needed for the day when pain and evil are ended altogether when Christ shall reign personally upon the earth, and the earth shall be renewed and receive its paradisiacal glory. It will be a day of redemption and judgment. God declared in the most powerful way imaginable that Jesus of Nazareth really was the Messiah. In the greatest irony of history, Jesus Himself underwent cruel and unjust judgment coming to the place which symbolized and drew together all the myriad cruelties and injustices of history, to bear that chaos, that darkness, that cruelty, that injustice in Himself, and to exhaust its power." End of quote. The Spirit made clear to me that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is uniquely empowered and commissioned to accomplish the necessary preparations for the Lord's Second Coming. Indeed, it was restored for that purpose. Can you find anywhere else a people who embrace the present era as the prophesied dispensation of the fullness of times in which God has purposed to gather together all things in Christ? If you don't find here a community intent on accomplishing what needs to be accomplished, for both the living and the dead, to prepare for that day. If you don't find here an organization willing to commit vast amounts of time and funds to the gathering and preparation of a covenant people ready to receive the Lord, you won't find it anywhere. Speaking to the Church in 1831, the Lord declared, The keys of the kingdom of God are committed unto man on the earth, and from thence shall the gospel roll forth unto the ends of the earth. Call upon the Lord that His kingdom may go forth upon the earth, that the inhabitants thereof may receive it, and be prepared for the days to come, in the which the Son of Man shall come down in heaven, clothed in the brightness of His glory, to meet the kingdom of God which is set up on the earth. What can we do to prepare now for that day? We can prepare ourselves as a people. We can gather the Lord's covenant people and we can help redeem the promise of salvation made to the fathers, our ancestors. All of this must occur in some substantial measure before the Lord comes again. First and crucial for the Lord's return is the presence on the earth of a people prepared to receive Him at His coming. 
He has stated that those who remain upon the earth in that day, from the least to the greatest, shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, and shall see eye to eye, and shall lift up their voice, and with the voice together sing this new song, saying, The Lord hath brought again Zion. The Lord hath gathered all things in one. The Lord hath brought down Zion from above. The Lord hath brought up Zion from beneath. In ancient times, God took the righteous city of Zion to Himself. By contrast, in the last days, a new Zion will receive the Lord at His return. Zion is the pure in heart, a people of one heart and one mind, dwelling in righteousness with no poor among them. The Prophet Joseph Smith stated, We ought to have the building up of Zion as our greatest object. We build up Zion in our homes, wards, branches, and stakes through unity, godliness, and charity. We must acknowledge that the building up of Zion occurs in tumultuous times, a day of wrath, a day of burning, a day of desolation, of weeping, of mourning, and of lamentation. And as a whirlwind it shall come upon the face of the earth, saith the Lord. Thus the gathering into stakes becomes for a defense and for a refuge from the storm and from wrath, when it shall be poured out without mixture upon the whole earth. Just as in former times we meet together oft to fast and to pray and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of our souls and to partake of the bread and water in remembrance of the Lord Jesus. As President Russell M. Nelson explained in General Conference last October, the long-standing objective of the Church is to assist all members to increase their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and His Atonement, to assist them in making and keeping their covenants with God, and to strengthen and seal their families. Accordingly, he emphasizes the significance of temple covenants, hallowing the Sabbath, and a daily feasting upon the gospel, centered at home and supported by an integrated study curriculum at Church. We want to know about the Lord, and we want to know the Lord. An underlying effort in building Zion is the gathering of the Lord's long-dispersed covenant people. We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the Ten Tribes. All who will repent, believe on Christ, and be baptized are His covenant people. The Lord Himself prophesied that before His return, the gospel would be preached in all the world to recover His people, which are of the house of Israel, and then shall the end come. Jeremiah's prophecy is being fulfilled. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither He had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. President Nelson has repeatedly emphasized that the gathering of Israel is the most important thing taking place on earth today. Nothing else compares in magnitude. Nothing else compares in importance. Nothing else compares in majesty. And if you choose to, you can be a big part of it. While we strive to be diligent in building up Zion, including our part in the gathering of the Lord's elect and the redemption of the dead, we should pause to remember that it is the Lord's work, and He is doing it. He is the Lord of the vineyard, and we are His servants. He bids us labor in the vineyard with our might this last time, and He labors with us. It would probably be more accurate to say He permits us to labor with Him. It is He who is hastening His work in its time employing our admittedly imperfect efforts, our small means, the Lord brings about great things. This great and last dispensation is building steadily to its climax, Zion on earth being joined with Zion from above at the Savior's glorious return. The Church of Jesus Christ is commissioned to prepare and is preparing the world for that day. His return to reign for a thousand years of peace, a righteous judgment and perfect justice for all, 
the immortality of all who ever lived upon this earth, and the promise of eternal life. Christ's resurrection is the ultimate assurance that all will be put right. Let us be about building up Zion to hasten that day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.